Greetings guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monat and this is my channel, Evolve with Monat. For those of you that are new here, I'm a professional intuitive empath finishing up with clients for the day and uh, I wanted to talk to you about this. Listen, if you are dealing with covert narcissist, you gotta call them out. My angels always make me work through my stuff through my clients in their own funny and very purposeful way. But I was dealing, it was the theme of the readings today, covert narcissism, not just regular, but like covert office friends or, or, or closer friends or family members that are passive aggressive, that have this grandiose kind of internal energy that nobody would know about, that are hate mongers, that are usually incredibly jealous, that make little snide jabby remarks. Here is the way to vanquish the covert narc. Call them out. Covert narcs traffic in in secrecy and subliminals. They love for you to have to overthink and overguess what kind of jabby ass energy they come with. They can hide barely thinly veiled insults behind their sneering veneer, but eventually you will see. Okay, and the mask gets ripped away. So when you've identified, when you've got your sights and path set on somebody who's a covert narc, call their ass out. What they hate more than anything is the idea that anybody would not think well of them because they are posturing to be functioning, high level, high contributing members of society. They are not. They're usually steeped in various addictions and steeped in a myriad of entangled webbed lies. Now, what, how, here's how you get the truth out of a covert narc is you look them in their eyes and you don't hide your contempt and you call them out. If they're concerned trolling you, like, let's give an example. A coworker that I used to work with was a covert narc and she would concern troll me about, you know, whatever. I can't even think of a good example now, but I remember having to tell her, I don't need you to concern troll me. Thank you. And she was appalled. She she was saying something like, oh, I'm just so worried about that. Da, 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 da. And then I countered her with, so you're concerned trolling. You're not actually concerned. You just want to talk about me to my face with me and have me be complicit and agree with you like I'm an idiot. People aren't used to that kind of honesty. I will say a lot of the things that I say on my channel, I get emails from people all the time that are like, whoa, girl, I wish I could talk or say that. Or whoa, girl, I would have never said that, right? And maybe uh, it's a little too honest, but I don't think so. Because I know that this is my ministry. Not everybody here wants to open their mouth and their voice, and that's okay. There are people here that do that. But covert narcs, just to get back to that, are not leaders, so they want to seem like they are. They're weak, weak sauce. They are inept. They're easily guided. They're that leaf friend that blows with the wind. So they like to be in. They like to be in the in, like the in crowd. They want to be popular. They're very caught up with that. They daren't ever be a real leader because that takes like actual thinking and actually having some idea of a direction and deeply being connected to your intuition. You don't have to be a spiritualist or a metaphysician. You don't have to be a Christian or a Buddhist to be a leader, but you do have to have some testicular fortitude. And if you can't sack up uh, around other people that are just being crude or rude, then this leadership thing is not for you, boo. And that's the energy that I like to convey to covert narcs, but I like to do it right to their face. You wanted me to be your enemy. Yeah. But you wanted to be sly with it because coming at me directly is not going to be something you get away with. And for you empaths listening, it's not something they can get away with. They seem to hold a lot of power because they cause a lot of confusion. If you're reading tarot, it's the five of wands. It's um triangulation. It's gossip. It's that kind of like toxic workplace energy. I dealt with a lot of workplace situations today with my clients. So that's where I'm heavily focused. But I dealt with a covert narc narcissist in my own life who did the same thing and triangulated me, ironically, with people at our office, even though I wasn't working in that office. But what I realized was her greatest fear wasn't it wasn't anything actually to do with me it was that she would be found out seen or excluded and not seen as popular and, and to descend those levels so when you're dealing with your covert narc the way that you actually help them descend those levels those imagined stairs that they climb because they're lazy covert narcs are the ones that copy your shit they're the ones that don't actually put in real work they're lazy af if there's a get rich scheme they're on it in fact you know what's so funny i'm thinking of stanley 
uh, from the Golden Girls, Dorothy Stanley Spornak, Dorothy's uh, Bornak's um, husband, ex-husband, who was always on a get rich scheme. Uh, <laughs> I can't even talk. Get rich quick scheme. He always had some young new hot thing. He was always cheating on Dorothy. There, my loves, is your covert narc. But he was sure that he was going to be uh, a million billionaire and hit it rich quick with all of his like instantaneous, you know. Uh, little gimmicks that he did and sometimes he made money and sometimes he lost it just as fast that's also something that you need to know about your covert narc they're always going to fall on their ass because it's built on a deck of cards it's nothing that's substantial they don't put in real work they don't make any really investments so i'm going to call you guys i'll call you guys back i'm going to come back and finish that up in a second part two i have my business manager calling i'll get back to you